although I, I would love to talk about what we do at CERN, CERN being the largest laboratory in the world, and where we try to understand what happened at the beginning of the universe, what are we made of, and what are the forces between these particles that really don't exist because they are smaller than 10 to the minus 19th of a meter. But actually I will go into a different subject that is that to bring people from different societies, different cultures, to bring them together. And, and that was something that came in the grounding of CERN because we are really talking about end of the Second World War. And when you have tens of millions of people that were killed from all the sides, the hatred is there. You cannot forget it that this is a process that takes a long time to overcome. Uh, so it might not be very modern. Uh, we are talking about the late 40s when some people had this idea of trying to bring science back to Europe because after the Second World War, in a large extension, to a large extension, science had disappeared. So they came with this idea of, of making a lab that would attract people from all over the world. That is simple to say. Uh, we do that in the UN all the time. People drink coffee together. Uh, uh, they, they feel that they are solving all the problems of the world. But the problem is that to solve such a thing, so to make it happening, you need to work together. And this is not an easy thing. And one of the central people here, uh, usually is not accepted, uh, was uh, Professor Gentner. Professor Gentner was a good German physicist that was uh, trying to build accelerators and work together with the French, work together with the Americans. And during the Second World War, he managed to get Joliot Curie out of the prison uh, to continue working with him and various other French people managed to destroy also an accelerator that they had built, but it's okay. That's part of the doing the work. But he knew what he was talking about, and he was actually the first one that, well, he was taken over essentially, he was the person that built the first accelerator at CERN, a 600 MBV machine that is here. And talking to, my, to the old German colleagues, I'm not that old, they had at the beginning a very hard time to get into the system and work together with the rest because the prejudices were there. And what, it takes one generation to get it. But when people have to construct something that is really at the edge of technology, and tomorrow they have to have a result and to have to have this piece working that could be added to the next piece working, to the next piece working, they, they, they forget who they are talking about it. They, 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 they have to get it. And they do it. And that was a very good way of forgetting about prejudices. Now, Professor Gentner, after constructing this, became the director of research. And that was another point that it was very hard to forget, and that was the Holocaust. Um, the, in, the late, in the early 50s, there was this Luxembourg agreement where German paid compensations to Israel. But that was not really quite accepted. And the, to my surprise, it was not even accepted in Germany in an easy way. Because uh, paying to Israel, it could lead to Arab countries to recognize this Germany. So Adenauer had to get the opposition to pass the legislation. In Israel, that was accepted as considered a pact with the devil. And one of the points that was put into the legislation is that there should be non-cultural relations between the two. So to have German scientists and Israeli scientists join together or doing something together was non-trivial. And it could happen because we had a neutral place. And the neutral place was the German cafeteria, the CERN cafeteria. In the CERN cafeteria, the director of research, Professor Gentner, met one of the senior experimentalists in Israel, Professor Deschalit, and they start talking about 
why don't we start working together as a way to really get forced, to, to really appreciate each other as human beings, as scientists? And actually, it worked. In 1959, there was an agreement to have scientific exchange. Actually, there were more Germans coming to Israel than the other way around. It took a long time for that to have Israeli scientists going to Germany. There were a few, but the whole principle was that you had to work really together in a project. And this is not that easy. And I was the first one in 1977 that came to the largest accelerator in northern Germany, in Hamburg, to work together. And I, I didn't know a word of German. Then after six months, German was the official language at home. But OK. Uh, and I couldn't believe it, because we were all humans and working day by day on getting something. And, and at the end, finally, that, in 65, that brought to the diplomatic relations. Now, one cannot think nowadays there is no such a conflict, OK? We are all humans, and, but it took a long, long period to get over it. And it was through this common work together between people in real conditions that they couldn't believe that, that that was a real issue. Now, you cannot think about uh, cultures that are farthest away than the Japanese and the Israelis, OK? But again, at CERN, we managed to work together. We constructed a smaller experiment that was only 15 meters by 15 meters by 15 meters and on, on only uh, close to a million detect detector elements, not much. <laughs> uh, and here the Israeli groups developed a new kind of detector that people believed didn't, wouldn't work. That's the green part over there. While the Japanese made all these black parts all around. But the, the main thing is not to make something. You have to make something and feel part of it and when you work in a large collaboration, that every single element counts on getting those results. This is not a trivial element. And to see that the other groups really feel responsible, that means that when something doesn't work, and something at the level of a 1% level, then the people are there at 7 o'clock in the morning to fix it, because it's a general responsibility towards the collaboration, to get, towards getting the scientific output. Then came this mutual appreciation between the Japanese groups and the Israeli groups. And that was the main reason that when there was this new accelerator, this LHC, when we found this so-called God uh, particle that has nothing to do with God, but is uh, uh, called Higgs boson, both groups, the Israelis and the Japanese, decided that they can join forces and bring, build a large part of the experiment. And the large part of the experiment, ah, yeah, it's 6,000 square meters of detector, 6,000 square meters is two football fields that will be built in, as a common project between the Israeli groups and the Japanese groups, were based on this Israeli developed uh, technology, but OK, although this is Israeli and this is Japanese and the others are Israeli, but all the electronics is, uh, is coming from uh, Japan. And then we got the Chinese that agreed to work together with the Japanese. But uh, there were some bad feelings over there but it, because of the world again. But the, the last uh, detectors were Japanese. And, and you can see huge groups. And not all of it is scientists. I mean, we are talking about many engineers, many technicians, people that don't even until this day know what is the Higgs boson. But we were working at the edge of the technology. Now, that brought me another idea, and that was uh, we in Israel had to build parts of a, a large magnets. So this part that you see here in front is to avoid that 27 degrees outside get inside where we are working at minus 269 degrees. And, and that was built in Israel. And, uh, and actually, it was built uh, uh, by a company that uses uh, Arabs and Jewish engineers and technicians. And uh, 
it happened at that time that the, the, those that were installed were inge uh, Arab engineers from Nazareth. Well, the King Abdallah came from Jordan. And he was talking to them, and we were all talking together. And we, what is the big difference? We are making science together. So that brought the idea of why not to bring Palestinians to also share that at CERN. And so I started bringing what we call summer students. You see large communities, so they don't have to feel bad about it that it's Israelis. But the main thing is that if the Israelis would have invited the Palestinians, that would have been bad. So the fact that one could contribute with funding to CERN, so CERN, as a neutral place, could invite those Palestinians and come there, that was fine. They were invited by the greatest international uh, laboratory in the world. And, uh, and they came, and they didn't feel bad about celebrating together and making parties together. And, and that really happened. And, uh, and essentially, all the summer students from uh, Palestinian summer students that came to CERN came with this Israeli fund, but invited by CERN. Now, the problems started to come back uh, at home, and uh, the family said, hey, why are you? doing that with the Palestinians, so that's why I have to cover a face there, because that would not be <laughs> nicely seen at home. It's part of the reality. It's in the societies, when many people are together, then it's not so easy to forget about the hatred. The other thing was, we see very large structures, and we said, well, why not having a groups of Pakistanis and Israelis working together? Uh, there were engineers and technicians, uh, so technology was not the issue, but we had to build these large structures that made those huge wheels that you saw before. The structures themselves in aluminium were actually also made in Israel, but the jigs on which they were put together that had needed also a precision of less than a millimeter for all these arrangements were put on Jigs made in Pakistan. And during a period of three years, you had engineers and technicians from Pakistan working together with engineers and technicians from Israel. And they wouldn't even go out together, celebrate together. Uh, uh, no, I, I mean, OK, celebrate together, have lunch together, have dinner together, because they realized that halal and kosher is the same thing. <laughs> And it worked. <laughs> and it worked. It, it didn't work for one of them. One of the Israeli technicians happened to be born in India. And that was for the Pakistanis was unacceptable. But all the rest worked. <laughs> now, we are not talking about the small things. We are talking about experiments where essentially you have to have a billion collisions, each one producing a huge amount of particles that are of no interest whatsoever. You have to throw one billion to see one that is of interest, OK? And you have the protons coming from the two sides, colliding in the middle. But from there to there is 47 meters. From top to bottom is 25 meters. And, and you have to know where every detector is located to a precision of a hair width, 50 microns. And we do it. We have managed to do it. It's thanks to that that we have managed to find this Higgs boson. But the point is that you have to keep those beasts working for periods of almost 20 to th or more years at the level of 99%. That means you can allow 1% not to work. This is amazing. This is much more than the space program. I mean, we are talking here about 100 million detector elements that have to give me the information 40 million times a second, times a few bits of information, uh, a bit of information on each one of them. That's 1,000 times the amount of communication, uh, for information passed to all the telephone communications in the world. And when my wife is on the phone, she is able to speak two hours. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> but the problem is, when you have such a projects constructed at the edge of the technology, people tend to forget about their mutual prejudices, learn to respect each other to what they have done, 
and feel proud of their common achievements. And I was trying to bring that back also to South America, because my alma mater is the Pontifica Universidad Católica de Chile. Uh, and the problem is that there, there was a tradition that every university is competing with each other. But to have an impact on such a project, you need to be able to work together. So it was a hard work to convince the government and the universities that they should join forces. And they joined forces, and the first detector for the new project to upgrade these experiments, or these large experiments, actually, that works, actually was built in Chile. And this is the Chilean detector, this is the Chinese, and this is the Canadian. The Canadian work doesn't work yet. It probably will not work. The, Chilean, the Chinese was half working. The Chilean detector is fully working. And that is, uh, well, <laughs> that is a reason of pride, but uh, it's, it's also the goodwill of people that all of a sudden they feel that they are part of something that they really have to produce it. They cannot play. It's a crucial element on what is going to be for a very large community. And feeling that responsibility is what they put them to work, not in the Chilean tradition, but working 12 hours a day until they got it to work. So to conclude, having well-defined projects at the edge of technology is really a way to allow people to concentrate on the end product and forget about the prejudices. And CERN being the largest laboratory in the world in that sense, provides this possibility to materialize a search project because you cannot invent something in the vacuum. You can develop things when you have some problem that is a concrete problem. And this, having these concrete problems is what allows. And then the mutual appreciation for the people feeling responsible is a way that allows you to jump into the water and do produce those things. And to ensure that is true was the case for the Palestinians to ensure fruitful scientific and, and cultural collaboration, we should avoid this feeling that one is being, one side is being patronized. And in that sense, CERN is an excellent example how to achieve that by being on neutral rounds. And to, take, to make an impact on large high energy physics experiments is very important that the groups learn also in Latin America to collaborate with each other and work together. Thank you. <laughs>